Hi, my name is Karen Hooper with Strat4. I'm here with my colleague, Reggie Thompson. We are members of Strat4's Latin America team. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about some of the events that have been happening in Colombia in the lead up to presidential elections and while negotiations are ongoing with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia and the government as they seek to settle a peace deal that may put an end to decades of political violence in Colombia. Reggie, can you update us a little bit on the kinds of attacks that we've seen recently and the impact that they've had in Colombia? Yes, recently we've seen attacks on oil pipelines, particularly on two pipelines. One is the Caño Limón pipeline, and the other is the Bicentenario pipeline. These are both located in eastern Colombia, particularly in the departments of Arauca and in Norte de Santander. On March 25th, the Caño Limón pipeline was attacked with explosives by uh, militants. Uh, it's not sure yet whether they were from the FARC or from the ELN, but that particular pipeline was shut down then because of those attacks, and indigenous protesters from the region blocked oil crews from reaching the site of the attacks so that they could be repaired then. So that pipeline has been shut since March 25th. The Bicentenario pipeline, on the other hand, has been shut down since February 20th due to repeated attacks against the length of its infrastructure. And what that's done is it's taken about 3% of the country's oil production. Uh, Colombia produces about 1 million barrels of oil per day. 3% of that is offline right now. So one of the big things that Colombia has had recently was that they reached the goal of over a million barrels per day produced and exported. Um, that was uh, part, part of that exported, of course. Um, that was a really big uh, accomplishment for Colombia, which was coming out of a decade of violence, a very militaristic campaign by the Uribe government prior to the Santos government. And this seems to hit them where it hurts. Um, what's the political angle here? Why are they attacking pipelines uh, and what do they hope to expect? Well, what's going on right now, you have to remember that this is going on in the context of the ongoing FARC negotiations in Havana. Right now, um, there's negotiators from the FARC and the government. They've been in Havana since uh, late 2012, and they've been negotiating on several points uh, to reach an eventual peace deal between the guerrillas and the government. Mm -hmm. Right now, the point of negotiations is uh, the third on the agenda. There's five points overall in the negotiations. This is third point has to do with uh, getting the FARC out of drug trafficking. It's a solution to the drug trafficking problem. And uh, that particular point is particularly touchy for the FARC. It's a sensitive spot because uh, a lot of FARC leaders have uh, warrants for their arrest in Colombia and they have extradition orders uh, from courts in the United States. And the FARC is unlikely to agree to any peace deal that would end with their potential arrest and extradition to the United States. Unfortunately for the Colombian government, they cannot promise amnesty because uh, this obviously narcotics trafficking is a very important um, point for the United States and they are legally not allowed um, to do so obviously because uh, there has been a, P a deal submitted to the Colombian Constitutional Court that uh, will eventually determine the roadmap for these negotiations and amnesty for crimes committed was specifically ruled out. Gotcha. So that's got to be a pretty big challenge for them. Have we seen the U.S. participating at all in these this dialogue? And, and to any extent, does it look like the U.S. might relieve some of the pressure on Colombia if they're able to get a, a, an agreement with the FARC on amnesty and, and on uh, extradition? Well, we haven't seen any overt moves from the United States government uh, to try to push for some sort of amnesty, obviously, in the talks. What we have heard is uh, in May of last year, we had um, rumors that the Colombian uh, guerrillas were approaching the U.S. government indirectly to try to, um, to understand, to get to some sort of agreement on uh, the narcotics trafficking issues on the outs outstanding warrants. Nothing more came of that. And uh, in November, I believe it was, we saw Eric Holder uh, visit Colombia and that topic was discussed, the issue of narcotics trafficking and the ongoing FARC talks. Uh, the United States is unlikely to forgive any militant uh, crimes uh, that have to do with narcotics trafficking, so that's a big challenge for the Santos government. Santos can't promise the FARC amnesty if it will um, negatively impact his relations with the United States, which is one of uh, Colombia's major security and economic trading partners. So the FARC isn't the only group that's active in Colombia and really not even the only group that's active in attacking pipelines. Tell me about some of the other players that we need to be concerned about when we're looking at the security landscape in Colombia. Well, as far as the security landscape goes in Colombia, obviously the FARC is the largest actor right now. They have about 8,000 uh, guerrillas in the field, but we have the smaller uh, National Liberation Army, and they have been uh, seeking to enter negotiations with the government as well. The pace of those have been slower. We had rumors 
late last year that uh, there could be upcoming negotiations. And we've got we've gotten other reports that um, the guerrillas from the ELN have met informally with members of the Santos government in Quito. However, um, the, these recent attacks could be due to the ELN pressuring for more um, concessions ahead of any negotiations. And a lot of these attacks have taken place in areas, particularly those on the Caño Limón pipeline, have taken place in areas where we know the ELN heavily operates. Okay, and what region of the country is that? This is a section of eastern Colombia um, on, along the Venezuelan border. This is in Arauca Department and uh, in Norte de Santander. These are uh, relatively remote areas where much of uh, Colombia's oil is found. These pipelines are very difficult to defend for the Colombian government. There are um, special battalions from the Colombian military dedicated specifically to protecting these lines, but the guerrillas have camps within Venezuela and they can attack uh, the long infrastructure very easily. Right, so they're able to do these uh, dashing over the border and then yes. going back into hide yes. in Venezuela. That makes sense, and it's a pretty difficult situation for the Colombian government to face. So we have presidential elections coming up. Um, what's your take on uh, on the outlook there? Well, we've got Santos uh, pushing for a re-election on May 25th in the presidential elections then. We uh, know that re-election in Colombia is a relatively recent phenomenon. According to most polls uh, taken in recent months, it's not a very popular phenomenon. A lot of people are not either not voting for Santos because they are opposed to re-election or they're just not voting, period. So we're likely to see a relatively low voter turnout in these elections. And um, we're probably, Santos is going to face a greater challenge in these elections than he faced in the 2010 vote. A lot of that is due to the split within the ruling coalition. Um, people loyal to the former president, Alvaro Uribe, are obviously separate now from Santos's coalition. We've also got the conservatives outside of Santos's coalition. So it's likely to be a tighter race, but uh, obviously we can't, um, we can't call whether or not it's going to go one way or the other. All right. Well, thank you very much, Reggie. Uh, for more information on Colombia, both its security situation and its political outlook, please check out our website, and we hope to see you there. Thank you.